Pag sinabi nating hyperthyroidism, meaning your thyroid gland is secreting too much T3 and T4, thereby increasing the level of T3 and T4 in the blood. Pag sinabi nating hypothyroidism, meaning your thyroid gland is secreting less level of your T3 and T4, thereby decreasing the amount of your T3 and T4. Pag sinabi nating euthyroidism, there is still a normal level of your T3 and T4. Let's start first with hyperthyroidism. Pag sinabi nating hyperthyroidism, there is heat intolerance and tachycardia. There could also be weight loss, weakness, emotional ability, and three more. But the common symptoms that we really observe to our patient is really your tachycardia. The most common clinical syndrome associated with hyperthyroidism is actually Graves' disease. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder wherein there is a circulating antibodies to the TSH receptor. So these antibodies mimic the action of your TSH and can stimulate your TSH receptor in your thyroid gland, thereby increasing the level of your T3 and T4. How do we differentiate primary hyperthyroidism from secondary hyperthyroidism? Pag sinabi nating primary, the primary refers to the main organ itself. So ang primary refers to your thyroid gland. Pag sinabi natin secondary, this refers to your pituitary gland. So how do we differentiate the two? Pag primary hyperthyroidism, ang may problema ang thyroid. Kasi nga, hyperthyroidism, meaning there is increased level of T3 and T4. Since your hypothalamus in pituitary is still normal, then what is the normal mechanism of the body or the normal response of the body is to depress the level or, or suppress the level of T3 and T4. How? By decreasing the level of your TRH and TSH. That is why in primary hyperthyroidism, T3 and T4 is increased. Your TRH and TSH is actually normal. It's actually low. In secondary hyperthyroidism, what happens is that the problem is in your pituitary gland. In pituitary gland, there is too much TSH. TSH is secreted. Then, this TSH will further simulate your, your thyroid gland to secrete more T3 and T4. Thereby, in secondary hyperthyroidism, increase na ang yung TSH, increase then ang T3 and T4. Since normal ang ating hypothalamus, what gonna be the normal response of the TRH? It's gonna be to low the level of TRH. So, in secondary hyperthyroidism, TRH is low, your TSH and your F and your T3 and T4 are higher. Again, primary hyperthyroidism, T3 and T4 is increased, TSH and TRH is lower to suppress your hyperthyroidism. In secondary hyperthyroidism, your TSH increase is increased and your T3 and T4 is also increased while your TRH is also is will be decreased to suppress the level of your T3 and T4. So what are the different thyroid disorders? So these are the different thyroid disorders. We have your, could be thyrotoxicosis, Graves' disease, or your diffuse toxic greater, subclinical hyperthyroidism, and we have your subacute granulomatous. So again, guys, when I was still a student, medical, uh, med, ket medic ba ako dati, I'm really confused about the definition of how do I differentiate greater from thyrotoxicosis from hyperthyroidism. And ito lang yan guys, I'll help you. Pag sinabi natin greater guys, this one, pag sinabi natin greater, meaning it is only a term that that defines an enlarged great, enlarged thyroid gland. So anything that is enlarged, that already defines as your greater. That's a general term. Enlarged thyroid gland, that's greater. How about hyperthyroidism and thyrotoxicosis, Doc? Kasi nga, most of the time, pag sinabi nilang, pag sinabi nilang thyrotoxicosis, it's only, it's actually interchangeable of hyperthyroidism. No, that is not. Thyrotoxicosis is different from hyperthyroidism. Bakit, Doc? Kasi nga, your hyperthyroidism, by the definition, let's go back with the simple definition, ha? Hyperthyroidism means there is an increased production or synthesis of your T3 and T4 by the thyroid gland. That's the definition of hyperthyroidism. How do we define thyrotoxicosis? Thyrotoxicosis, thyrotoxicosis can is defined as increased level of T3 and T4, but not necessarily increased synthesis of your thyroid hormone. Huh? Pwede pabuyan, Doc? Yes, that's possible. In short, 
all of your hyperthyroidism may lead to thyrotoxicosis but not all thyrotoxicosis is brought about by hyperthyroidism kasi another example of that thyrotoxicosis thyrotoxicosis that is not brought about by hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis without hyperthyroidism example patient with um, necrotic thyroid gland or a uh, thyroid gland problem that leads to necrosis so in short diba your thyroid gland is a storage of your T3 and T4. Hindi ka na nagsisynthesis or wala ka nang sinesynthesize ng T3 and T4 but nags pwedeng nagsistore ka na lang. Pero pag necrotic, but, but in a certain disorders na naging necrotic ang ating thyroid gland, what happens is that it will release the stored form of your T3 and T4 in the colloid, thereby increasing the level of your T3 and T4. But it is not brought about by hyperthyroidism. Kasi nga, sira na yung thyroid gland. Hindi na siya nagsisikrit ng T3 and T4. Pero, nagkakaroon ka pa rin ng thyrotoxicosis kasi nga, na-release ang level ng T3 and T4. So, thereby, your thyrotoxicosis is not synonymous with hyperthyroidism. Another example of thyrotoxicosis without hyperthyroidism your patient is taking hormone. So, patient taking mga, for example, patient is taking levothyroxine. So, in short, patient can have increased level of this thyroid hormone, pero hindi ka nagsisikrit ng T3, wala ka, walang secretion ng T3 and T4 from your thyroid gland. So, in short, so our, our dictum for this one is that all patients with hyperthyroidism may undergo with thyrotoxicosis because it can lead to increased level of T3 and T4 but not all thyrotoxicosis is brought about by your hyperthyroidism. Thyro thyrotoxicosis can happen without hyperthyroidism or it can also happen with hyperthyroidism. So for Graves, so that's the definition of your thyrotoxicosis, hyperthyroidism, and your greater. So for Graves, it says the other term is diffuse kasi nga the entire thyroid gland is affected. Toxic kasi nga, there is already increased level of hyperthyroidism. Greater because there is enlargement of your thyroid gland. In short, there is increased level enlargement of the entire of your entire entire thyroid gland yielding to increased level of your T3 and T4. That's why it becomes toxic. So diffuse, toxic, greater. We have also your subclinical hyperthyroidism. We have also your subacute granulomatous subacute non-separative thyroiditis or what we term as your liquor veins thyroiditis. Let's go with a different uh, diseases or disorder. For thyrotoxicosis, ito yung sinasabi ko, grow, uh, group of syndromes. It's actually a lot of syndromes caused by high levels of free thyroid hormone in the circulation but not necessarily increased synthesis of T3 and T4. So in your thyrotoxicosis, there is low TSH, FT4 is actually normal and FT3 is actually high. Pag sinabi natin free T4, this is actually the unbound T4. And free T3, this is the unbound T3. And for plumber's disease, usually there is T3 thyrotoxicosis. Increased level of your T3 with a normal level of your T4. Pag normal ang T4, pag at increase ang T3, ang tawag dyan is your T3 thyrotoxicosis. On the other hand, pag normal ang T4 but high ang Normal ang T3, but high ang T4. Ang tawag dyan is your T4 thyrotoxicosis. Discuss natin to kanina, Graves disease, most common cause of your thyrotoxicosis. It is an autoimmune, six times more common in women than in men. It is brought about by an autoimmune antibodies that, that mimics your TSH. In Graves disease, the one that causing this Mimicking of your TSH is actually their circulating antibodies or what we term as your thyroid recept uh, TSH receptor antibodies. So TSH receptor antibodies. These are the circulating antibodies to your TSH receptor. Ito yung nagmimimix sa ating TSH. Kaya nga, tumataas ang T3 and T4. So what are the features of patients with Graves' disease? Pretrivial mixed edema, greater exophthalmos and ophthalmopathy. There's also dermopathy or skin lesions. So the diagnostic test or Hulmark test for your Graves' disease is your TSH receptor antibody test. So this is a typical picture with patients who have Graves' disease. So they have this ophthalmopathy. Ito yung tinatawag natin na exophthalmus, protruding eyeball. 
very bulging eyeball. This is actually a hallmark of Graves' disease. Patients with exophthalmos, makikita mo palang yan sa emergency room. Ah, bulging eyeball. This patient is having Graves' disease. Lo and behold, the patient is really having a Graves' disease. Because this is a hallmark. Basta may makita ka ng bulging. Ah, most probably. Most probably, this is a Graves' disease. And there's a misconception about this one that all patients with hyperthyroidism will result in two exophthalmos. No, not all patients with hyperthyroidism will have exophthalmos. As I said, exophthalmos is the whole mark for your Graves' disease. Pag sinabi natin whole mark, it is specific only for your Graves' disease. That's why pag makita namin si ER na ang malaking mata, payat, Tapos na, madaling mainit, mainitin, uh, alam na, this is Graves disease. So, very whole mark. Ha? Remember that not all patients with hyperthyroidism resulted into Graves ophthalmopathy or your exophthalmos. It's very, it's very, um, um, whole mark to this, as in like, it's really for Graves disease. So, these are the clinical presentation. A lot of these symptoms are actually similar with only with your patients with hyperthyroidism. Heat intolerance, weight loss, tachycardia, exophthalmos. Exophthalmos may be present. Of course, all the time it is present because this is a whole mark of your exophthalmos. So, how about subclinical hyperthyroidism? Pag sinabi nating subclinical, meaning wala pang clinical manifestation. No clinical signs and symptoms because the level of your T4 and T3 is still normal. In short, what is the range? What, what, um, blood levels that is actually can be seen only is actually your TSH. Your TSH is low. Pag sinabi natin subclinical, no clinical signs and symptoms, thereby we can think that your T3 and T4 is still normal. Since this is hyperthyroidism, what is the normal the normal um, response of the body is to, is to suppress this T3 and T4. How? to lower your TSH. That's why your TSH is low. So TSH is low with normal T4 and T3. That's a subclinical hyperthyroidism. Decur veins thyroiditis. I was not, I, can, I cannot recall, uh, may nakita akong patient na ganito. These are not common cases. But for this one, they have neck pain, low-grade fever, and thyroid function swing. So TPO are absent. ESR and TG levels are actually high. Now let's proceed with our next problem. This cannot be our hypothyroidism. So in hyperthyroidism, usually the signs and symptoms, coarseness, cold, sensitivity, dry skin, constipation, bradycardia, and muscle weakness. For hypothyroidism, we have three types. We have primary, secondary, and tertiary. Again, ulit-ulitin natin to ha. Pag sinabi natin primary, Pag sinabi natin primary hypothyroidism, it has something to do with your thyroid gland. Pag sinabi natin secondary hyperthyroidism, it has something to do with your pituitary. Pag sinabi natin tertiary, it has something to do with your hypothalamus. So primary thyroid, secondary pituitary, tertiary hypothalamus. So from here to here to here, paakyat. Primary, secondary, tertiary. Primary, thyroid, secondary, pituitary, tertiary, hypothalamus. So, let's isa-isahin natin. Pag sinabing primary hypothyroidism, kasi nga hypothyroidism, it is expected a level of T3 and T4 is low. Primary hypothyroidism, the problem is in your thyroid gland. So, it does not secrete enough T3 and T4. Since the problem is, your thyroid, is in your thyroid gland, now, the normal feedback mechanism towards your pituitary and your hypothalamus is to increase this level. So, in short, your TSH and your TRH is high. Kasi nga, gusto mong pataasin ang T in T3 and T4. Kaya lang, may problema ang pituitary. Kaya nga, kahit pataasin natin ang TSH and TRH, it will not cause now the increase of your T3 and your T4. So, in short, your T3 and T4 will low. Your TSH and TRH as a normal feedback mechanism is to be, is to increase its level. In secondary hyperthyroidism, ano ang problema? Ang problema natin is in your, in your pituitary. Kasi nga, tawag natin hypothyroidism. Pituitary ang problema, tapos hypothyroidism. In short, your TSH is low. Since your TSH is low, it will result into low levels of T3 and T4. But what's gonna 
be the normal feedback mechanism, your TSH, your TSH, your T3 and T4 will send signals to your hypothalamus to increase the level of your TRH. But still, the problem is your pituitary. It will not respond to your TRH. That's why your TRH, even though is high, still your TSH will be low. Mataas ang TRH, mababa ang TSH, as an effect, T3 and T4 will also be low. That's your secondary hypothyroidism. How about your tertiary hypothyroidism? The problem now is in your is in your hypothalamus. You cannot secrete enough TRH. Since you cannot secrete enough TRH, what will happen? Your TSH will also be low. If low ang TSH, what will happen? Your T3, T4 will also be low. So in short, in tertiary, everything is low. In secondary, what is low is your, is your T3, T4, and TSH only, but high in TRH. In primary, since the problem is only in the thyroid gland, you cannot secrete the normal levels of T3 and T4. So the problem here is only in your T3 and T4 low levels, but as the normal response of the body is to increase your TRH and your TSH. I hope this is clear. If you cannot still understand this one, just me and me anytime. So these are the disorders of your hypothyroidism, primary hypothyroidism, Hashimoto, mixed edema, the secondary, the tertiary, and the other types. And ito na, primary hypothyroidism, we already discussed this one. Primary, primarily, due to the deficiency of elemental iodine. Kumbaga, mababa ang level ng iodine natin. Low T3 and T4, but high TSH kasi nga, as a compensatory, tataas ang TSH level. Also caused by destruction or ablation. Or for those who undergo surgical removal, RAI, treatment, radiation, or drugs such as your lithium. So in short, patient undergoing uh, patient who had hyperthyroidism, kasi kagalay ng patient ko, ba? My patient underwent a total thyroidectomy because of hyperthyroidism. But because of the removal of this hyperthyroid, of this thyroid gland, te, wala ka ng T3 and T4. So what will happen is that it will result into hypothyroidism. So any surgical removal of your thyroid gland will yield to hypothyroidism. That is why in patients who undergo surgical removal of your thyroid gland, they have to be maintained on, on, on hormonal drugs, specifically your levothyroxine, to maintain the level of your T4 and T3. That's why it's going to be a lifetime management or medical treatment with your hormonal management or hormonal medication. Permanent na yan, forever na yan, guys, na you have to take that drug. What is Hashimoto? The same. Hashimoto is actually, is also an autoimmune. The same with your Graves' disease. Chronic, kasi nga, matagal na ito. Autoimmune because your own body is attacking your thyroid gland, leading to IDTs, ITs, inflammation. Chronic, matagal na, autoimmune. Your own cell is attacking your thyroid gland, leading to inflammation, kaya nga ITs, so chronic autoimmune thyroiditis. The most common cause of a primary hypothyroidism. Kanina, what is the most common cause of primary hyperthyroidism? It's your Graves' disease. Sa hypothyroidism, it's your Hashimoto's disease. It's also an autoantibody. It's also shaded with the enlargement of your thyroid gland. Ito yung Hashimoto, there's already a greater or enlargement of your thyroid gland. Same also with Graves' disease. They can also manifest with greater. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, it is the inflammation of your thyroid gland. Kasi nga, itis, anything that ends with itis, that means inflammation. It is an autoimmune disorder wherein the anti antibodies attack the thyroid gland. What are the symptoms? There will be greater fatigue, muscle weakness, and weight gain. So these are a typical presentation of patients with hypothyroidism. So for hypothyroidism, what is positive? What can you can detect in the laboratory is, acute, is actually the presence of your TPO antibody. And it is also, your TSH is also increased. Kasi nga, remember Hashimoto, it's a primary hypothyroidism. The problem is in your thyroid gland. Since your thyroid gland cannot secrete the level of your T3 and T4, it will, it will, as a normal body's response, it will increase the TSH level. For the hypothyroid mix edema, um, it describes the peculiar non-peating swelling of the skin. So the common presentation of patients with mixed edema is puffy face, weight gain, slow speech, eyebrows, thin, dry, and yellow skin, and anemia. Still a typical of your, of your hypothyroidism. Actually, 
uh, the most severe form of your mixed, edo mixed edema, which is a primary hypertator DSM, is actually the patient can undergo coma. That's what we term as your mixed edema coma. How about secondary hypertheroidism? So secondary hypertheroidism, pwedeng may destruction or may pituitary adenoma tayo sa ating pituitary gland. If may destruction ang ating pituitary, remember secondary, anong iisipin natin? Iisipin natin ang pituitary. Anong sinisikrit ng pituitary? Is your TSH. Since this is hypo, hypo ito, that's thereby decreasing the level of your TSH. So low TSH as a result, low T3 and low T4. For tertiary hyperthyroidism, the problem is your hypothalamus. So your hypothalamus, since it is hypothyroidism, it is secreting low level of your TRH. Low level of your TRH, thereby causing low level of your TSH, thereby low level of T3 and T4. Next is your congenital hypothyroidism. What is this? Your congenital hypothyroidism, there is a defect or dysfunction or a development or function of your gland. Retarded physical and mental development. That's why congenital hypothyroidism. There's a problem actually. It's a congenital defect. A problem in the development of your thyroid gland. Hindi nag hindi nag develop ang thyroid gland ng bata. So what happens is that there will be retardation of your physical and mental development. Remember your thyroid gland. Your thyroid hormone can stimulate the production of your growth hormone. Remember that. And also it is essential for your CNS development. That's why. Children who are born with congenital hypothyroidism, they're actually mentally retarded. So the screening test for that is your T4 and your confirmatory test is your TSH. Since the problem here in congenital hypothyroidism is in your thyroid gland. Pag problem sa thyroid gland, anong nangyayari? Low ang T3 and T4. Paano magkocompensate? Ang T Paano? Ano mangyayari sa TSH natin? Kailangan magcompensate. So in short, it has to be increase so your tsh is increased your t4 is decreased so for congenital hypothyroidism it's part of your newborn screening test that is on time the newborn screening test is only six but now we have expanded newborn screening we have additional 22 more tests so 22 plus 6 it's already a 28 test right now so that's why it's important to have a newborn screening because we have to detect this congenital hypothyroidism. If we detect that the patient is having congenital hypothyroidism, then somehow we can we can correct the low levels of your T3 and T4. We can somehow excuse me, we can somehow prevent physical and mental retardation. So this is the severe forms of your, this is cretinism, this is actually your other term for your congenital hypothyroidism or the severe form of your congenital hypothyroidism. So the patient is dwarfed with severe mental defect, there is coarse dry hair, deficient hair teeth, retarded skeletal growth, and reduced base, uh, basal metabolic rate. For subclinical hypothyroidism, it's actually the same kanina. Pag sinabing subclinical, it's only mild. No clinical sign and symptom. Since this is hypothyroidism, since this is hypothyroidism, what is expected with your TSH? It should be high as a normal, as a normal, as a normal, um, a response to a hypothyroidism. Pero since this is subclinical, your T4 and T3 are still normal. No clinical signs and symptoms. T4 and T3 is still normal. But ang my problem is your TSH is already slightly high. Now, there are also disorders that could also lead to euthyroidism. What are these? It refers to a normal thyroid hormone levels clinically and uh, biochemically. So, patients may have quater, so patients may have enlargement of their thyroid gland, but still their level of your T3 and T4 is still within normal. Or patients may have thyroid adenoma or thyroid carcinoma so even though the patients have thyroid carcinoma they can still have normal levels of t3 and t4 depending on the type of cancer of the patient meron tayong tinatawag na subclinical hyperthyroidism and subclinical hypothyroidism actually we already discussed this one a while ago pag sinabing subclinical Pag subclinical, your T3 and T4 are normal regardless of whether this is hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. Ang isipin na lang natin ang TSH level. Again, subclinical, 
Obviously, T3 and T4 are normal kasi this is mild, no signs and symptoms. Ang isipin na lang natin is the level of your TSH. Pag TSH, subclinical hyperthyroidism, what is expected? Kasi nga, isipin natin hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroid. Ang normal response ng body is to suppress the hyperthyroidism. So in short, the TSH must be, must be low. So in subclinical hyperthyroidism, the TSH is low. In subclinical hypothyroidism, normal T3 and T4, pero hypothyroid ang patient. Hypothyroid ang kanyang picture, meaning T3 and T4 is low. So, anong dapat mangyayari sa TSH niya? Low ang kanyang T3 and T4. Dapat, as a normal response, tataas ang TSH. So, in hyperthyroidism, TSH is low. In hypothyroidism, TSH is high. Opposite lang sa main nila. Pag subclinical, normal T3, T4. I want you to know these two important effect or terms. Meron tayong tinatawag na wolf Chekhov effect and jude base 2 effect. Ano ito? Guys, when we say wolf Chekhov effect, it is an auto-regulatory phenomenon whereby large amount of ingested iodine acutely inhibits your thyroid hormone synthesis. In short, giving of more than enough iodine, so excess iodine can lead to inhibition of your thyroid hormone synthesis. Kaya nga, when we have patients who have hyperthyroidism, na sobrang, sobrang tachycardic na patient is already in attack, so what we give is we give a potassium iodide salt solution, your KISS solution. So this, this KISS solution is actually rich in iodine. And this iodine, increased excess amount of this iodine, can inhibit your thyroid hormone synthesis. So that's what we term as your wolf shake of wolf shake off effect. Increased level of your iodine can lead to the inhibition of thyroid hormone synthesis. How about your jode base 2 effect? Your jode base 2 effect is a hyperthyroidism following administration of iodine. Parang opposite si wolf shake off. Si wolf shake off nagbigay tayo ng iodine para isuppress ang kanyang, para masuppress ang production ng T3 and T4. Pero sa jode base do, nagbigay tayo ng iodine, pero it yields to hyperthyroidism. Bakit ganyan do? Kasi nga, these are common to those people living in, in, in mga mountain people, mga mountain people, yung mga nasa malataas na lugar that have a low levels of iodine. Because in, pe um, in uh, mga people na living on, Mountain, mountainous area, they have low levels of iodine kasi nga walang dagat doon. So in short, they have low levels of iodine. So their body is able to cope up with low levels of iodine. But when they go to an area na rich in iodine, and even a small amount of iodine lang ang kanilang take up, it will exaggerate their thyroid gland, secreting increased amount of your T3 and T4. So in short, that's now your jode base 2 effect. So, wolf take off, you ingest a lot of iodine to suppress your thyroid hormone synthesis. Jode base though, these are for people na who have a deficient iodine, pero because pag nakapunta sila sa area na malaming, malaming sources ng iodine, kahit small administration lang ng iodine, it will exaggerate their thyroid gland to secrete a lot of T3 and T4. Now, let's proceed with our laboratory methods. I guess these are only short na lang. We are almost done with our discussion. We already somehow incorporated naman that different test that we are actually, we dis already discussed this a while ago. So, the difficulties in interpreting thyroid function test, the presence of abnormal binding proteins. Kasi nga, pag nakabound sila ng sa, sa, sa specific protein, we will not be able to detect that. And alteration also in a hormone metabolism. So, again, the hormone measurement that we can, we can test is your TRH, your TSH, your free T4, as well as your free T3. However, again, sorry, again, your hormone levels should be correlated with other tests such as imaging, biopsy, and etc. So, your TRH, these are not clinically useful and it's difficult to develop physically specific antibody for an immunoassay. So, TRH, usually sa laboratory na tinetest namin, it's really your TSH, T3, and T4. I have never encountered a measurement for your TRH. 
for your TSH can identify virtually all instances of hyper and hypo. That is why I want to reiterate this one. The most sensitive test for hyperthyroidism and your hypothyroidism is your TSH. If you've been asked by your relatives kung ano ipapatest nila, if, they, if you believe na yung relatives mo is my 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 hyperthyroidism or my greater or my hypothyroidism, you can tell them, ah, patas ka muna ng TSH. It's really your TSH that is really sensitive for hyper and hypothyroidism. But except for those who have mga diagno who have damage to their hypothalamus or their pituitary. Because if they have a damage to your hypothalamus or pituitary gland, therefore, re uh, resulting in a erroneous result of your TSH. So for TH, TSH, we have different immunoassay, first generation, second generation, third generation, and fourth generation. I just don't mind this one. It is very technical. These are two technical ones. But just take note that the first generation assay is not sensitive. The second generation is more sensitive compared to your first generation. Your third generation refinement in your immuno metric method but what is most commonly used right now is your third generation assay the fourth generation assay is more recently developed but not widely available your ft4 these are the biologically active fraction we have the different tests we have symmetrical dialysis ultra filtration type and your tandem mass spectrometry ano nga yung i remember this one diba yung mass spectrometry diba it has a law Yung, I forgot what was that law. Uh, the principle of your spectrometry. It's your, it's your parang beer Lambert's ba yun? Beer Lambert's law which states that, ano nga yun? I forgot. Uh, beer Lambert's law states that, di ba yung, the light absorbed is directly proportional to the, to the concentration of something solute. Para ang point that, ang para ang point ng principle na to is that, Whatever the light that is being absorbed by your machine, it's actually equivalent to the concentration of the solute present on that, on that, on that one that you are go that you are actually testing. I'm not sure if I forget. I'm so sorry. But just review that ha, your spectrometry, spectrometry, the beer Lambert's law. We have also your tyroxine total assay. Often used so again. When you request for this test T4 still, you have to correlate that with your TSH. Your free T4, this is the biologically active fraction, which is more common. Biologically active kasi free, that is not bind. Pag bind, it is not the one that is actually in that is actually inactive fraction. T3, still you have to correlate again with TSH. And we already discussed that. RT3, the one that is being inactive, has no biological effect, still little clinical significance. For your thyroglobulin, for your thyroglobulin, it is actually increased in Graves' disease, in thyroiditis, and nodular greater. Your thyroglobulin is a tumor marker for thyroid malignancy. So that's why it is also used in for follow-up patients with thyroid malignancy post-operatively. That's why my patient who had undergo thyroidectomy from a papillary carcinoma, the test that we usually request is your thyroglobulin. We want to check if there is recurrence of, of your malignancy. So this is a very good tumor marker for thyroid malignancy. Please remember this one. Your TBG, it is inherited. TBG abnormalities, complete or partial deficiency or decreased affinity for T3, T4, T3, and TBG excess. Other thyroid autoantibodies, we could detect the specific antibodies. Diba your TPO antibody? This is for Hashimoto's. Your TSH receptor antibody? This is for your Graves' disease. Let's call it ulit. TPO for Hashimoto. Anti, your anti-TG antibody? This is for in iodide deficient areas, your serum, your serum TG antibodies measurement can be used to detect autoimmune. It's still useful for your autoimmune thyroid disease. But still, if we want to be more specific, we, we request for TPABO, TPAB, or thyroxine peroxidase antibody, or your TSH receptor antibody that is more specific than your anti-thyroglobulin antibody. 
So again, your TSH, we have your, for your Graves disease. We also test for do your urinary iodine, but this is not common. I never encountered or I never done in my life or never requested urinary iodine. But this is only to assess the dietary iodine intake. For iodine deficiency disorders, accurate estimate of your dietary iodine intake. These are usually the normal urinary iodine level. Pag more than 100, normal, 50 to 99, mild deficiency, 20 to 49, moderate deficiency, less than 20, severe deficiency. Again, let's review thyroid hormones, primary hypothyroidism, primary hyperthyroidism. So, pag primary refers to your thyroid gland, thyroid gland ang problema. Sige nga, primary hypothyroidism. Clue terms na natin, hypothyroidism. Therefore, this is low. This is low. Primary hyperthyroidism, your thyroid hormone, is increased. Since the problem is in your thyroid gland, then the body can compensate using your TSH and your TRH. TSH, ano nangyayari? Primary hypothyroidism, kasi nga, mababa ang T3 and T4. As a compensat compensatory mechanism, your TRH will be Increase. Since increase ang TRH, your TSH will also be increased. Primary hyperthyroidism, ang problem, ang thyroid gland. So in short, hyper siya. T3 and T4 will be your increase. Your thyroid hormone will be increased. Since normal ang ating pituitary and your hypothalamus, the normal mechanism will be to decrease now your level of your hyperthyroidism through decreasing the TRH and your TSH. I guess it's just easy, guys, as long as you remember the problem. In a primary, the problem is your thyroid gland. In secondary, the problem is in your pituitary gland. In your tertiary, the problem is in your in your hypothalamus. I hope that this is going to be our last slide and I hope that you had a good discussion for today. I know it's quite overwhelming again. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to ask me. I would really appreciate that you ask lots of questions. The last time that I had discussion, it's only I have only two, two questions from out of 500 students. So it's quite, I don't know if you really understand or, or, or really understand my topic or maybe you have still doubtful, uh, doubtful or questions. Please do not hesitate to ask me. So I guess it's... You have a free time right now. This is actually we don't have a quiz later on and parang holiday ata today. So have time to to chill. I mean, I know you have so many things to study, so many subjects. I've been there, I've been that. I really understand you guys. I understand that you are in a pandemic. You are you are just inside your room or you are having problem or understanding the topic. I would really understand that that. I would really understand that because I've been I've been through online discussion also during my PLA review. But what I want you to do is if you are done with studying this one, have some time to chill. I mean, you can watch Netflix if if you are into into medical series, you can watch I would suggest you watch hospital playlist promise guys. It's very similar for what is happening in a hospital setup. If you want to become a doctor, Try to watch Hospital Playlist as a Korean drama and it's a very nice, as in super nice, you would really appreciate it. And what is happening in the in that series is actually happening in the real, real setup. If you're into anime, you can watch, um, I would suggest you can watch um, Demon Slayer, swear it's su super duper nice, Demon Slayer. Or you may also watch, ang pinaka bago ko lang pinanood is yung the promised neverland <laughs> grab it's very emotional very dramatic and it's very simple it's a very intelligent series i i guess parang mat super tagal na mga 2019 or 2018 pa ata yung mga series na to and of course if you are a gamer you play if you're done studying i i'm a fan of playing ps4 i i all um ang masuggest ko talaga ni i-play nyo bago ko lang na play to but i guess this game is still new last 2020 lang you try to play ghost of tsushima it's a very nice, very nice story, very nice graphics. Everything is so nice. So I hope, have time, have time to chill. If you're into reading books, you read books. 
if you want to travel, I mean, have the preco precautions lang as long as with your family. If your family knows about it, as, as long as precautionary. But as long as you have time to chill, go for it, relax, and still, I hope that you had fun enjoying my discussion. So, before for before I end this one, we will, of course, we will still have, for my quiz next week, we will still have a simple multiple choice, simple true or false, um, true or false, a matching type, and most especially, ang pinaka-favorite natin is your case series type. In your case series type, I'll try my best. I will try to be more considerate. Of course, I have to because the last time I recall, I have a question about yung isang may peer analysis part. And I was really shocked that majority of you, even though for those who answered, kahit yung mga taong na, they get a 28 score, 27 score, majority of you answered urinary tract infection. And I was really shocked na I did not discuss UTI. Kahit ang sa bacteria doon is many, it is not an indication of UTI. And then, then I just asked, I asked my co-professor, I asked them, tapos na ba sila sa urinalysis? Then I found out na you're, we're not, hindi pa pala kayo, you're still ongoing na, you're still ongoing na urinalysis. Hindi po nyo pala na technically tapos ang urinalysis. So, with that, kaya pala tingala ko, bakit UTI ang sinagot nila? Hindi naman ako nag-discuss ng UTI. Kung sinagot pala DM, pwede pa yun or diabetes and sipido. So, for, for this time, I will try to be more considerate. So, for the last exam or for the last quiz, I will um adjust your scores because it was very low. And I will try to adjust it because... I have to consider it. Wala pa pala kayo. Hindi pala kayo natapos ng urinalysis. So, as a clue na lang for your urinalysis, ha, it doesn't mean that maraming bacteria, it is already urinalysis. You have to look back again with your leukocyte esterase. Leukocyte esterase is a very good indicator if the patient has, ur if has urinary tract infection. If mataas, ang, if positive, ang kanyang leukocyte esterase. Plus, you check for the WBC. The WBC of the patient is only 2 to 3. That's actually normal. It's only UTI when it's more than 5, 6, 7, or more than that. Even though the bacteria, many ang bacteria, it could mean that the patient will only have asymptomatic bacteria. But does it mean the patient have urinary tract infection? Okay, so much for that. I will adjust your score for the last quiz. Ako na bahala dun. So, for that, I hope that you learned something from tonight. It was overwhelming. And hoping for another discussion next semester, uh, next, next term by the midterm. Thank you, everyone, and have a chill weekdays. Goodbye. Bye-bye.